generally take questions as you go, or you prefer to kind of wait? You can do my best. Okay. Alright, unless I have one, because I have the mic, so I'll interrupt you if I have questions. Great, thank you. Hey, thanks everyone. This is the most, this is, I never spoke in front of some people before. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. God gave me a purpose, and I'm going to do this, and I told, you know, I mean, I, I really feel that our purpose on this planet is to help fellow human beings, and uh, when we see evils being perpetrated against people, it's our job to fight against it and make a difference. I was a victim about 15 years ago. The town of Lockport uh, tried putting me in jail for putting fundraisers on my sign on a digital billboard I had in front of my auto repair business. And I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. I fought it, fought it, you know, tens of thousands of dollars later, and really didn't get much besides not going to jail. But the politicians were totally unaccountable. The law wasn't even there for them to do that, but because our elected officials and judges and government officials are above the law, we are stuck in this position we are in. And um, has voting ever fixed anything? No. You know, so this is the frustration. And, and they wonder why people don't show up and vote. Why? Because it, it seems to get worse and worse as time goes on. Um, just today I found out a friend of mine, nurse, uh, got fired today. Her last day is going to be Friday. Even though she tried turning in a resignation so she can get her vacation time, I said, no, here you go. You're gone. And then uh, last week, my son was informed that if his mask came down below his nose, that he's going to get points taken off his grade. So, so I'm in the process of, of uh, going to send a legal notice to the, the court. It, it's all based off law. And um, the path I'm going to take you on here is, is you're going to have to raise your mind. And, and everything you've been taught is we're, we're living down this, this, this path, and, and this is what it is. Now, which pill do you want? Which one do you want? Red or blue? Because the blue one, I'll just say, just take a ride to the White House, and that'll you know, take you right down that path. But it's, you know, the, the movie Matrix, it's very, you know, so how would you, you want to go down the rabbit hole? And, you know, blue the story ends, and that's it. You know, so just, just go home, you don't really, but, this is a battle. This is a battle of freedom. This is a battle of our God-given rights. And there's been an ungodly amounts of apathy between everybody because it's human nature to live a good life. It's human nature, you know, my family's safe, everybody's healthy, why pay attention? Everything seems okay. We know there's some issues here and there. You know, so, so why? But this is the end result. This is what we get. And it started almost 100 years ago. So this is the new, it just progressively gets worse and worse with time. And um, it's, it's very interesting. So what I'm going to do here is explain to you what they're doing is legal, but it's not lawful. So they have done something to us to contract you in some type of legal nature so they can say, well, no, you can't do that. So some way, you gave up your rights to be judged by a judge. Do you remember doing that at all? I never did it. But at what point do we elect the public servant to become our master, and then we have to do what they say? I mean, the Bible, the Bible does represent laws, or mention laws, but it's a different type of law. And the Declaration of Independence says we, we're living under laws of nature and nature's God. Now, can a politician write laws of nature? No, they can't. But that was the, the Declaration of Independence. I'm sorry if I said the Constitution. The Declaration of Independence, it says laws of nature, nature's God. That's a big problem. Because it doesn't help the politicians. They want you to think that they're God. They want you to think they're above everyone else. So when these attorneys where I feel a good 99% of them are totally indoctrinated by the system, they believe that a judge judges what your rights are, which inherently, that's not what our founding fathers put in place, because our founders knew that the kings usurped their power through the judges that they owned. 
So they put a legal system in place to stop that from happening. And the legal system they put in place is 800 years old from the Magna Carta. So King John in 1215 AD was usurping the rights of his people so bad, his barons said, we gotta do something here. So running the, they surrounded him, must have been some kind of meeting or an event. So the barons surrounded him at any point in swords and said, you sign this or we're gonna kill you. So they made him sign the Magna Carta that more or less created the grand jury and the trial jury system 800 years ago. But we don't know that. So, but our founding fathers knew that. Because during the Constitution, the writing of the Constitution, they, you had Federalists and you had Anti-Federalists. The Federalists wanted a strong, wanted a strong centralized government. Well, the Anti-Federalists says, no, we don't want that because that's what we have over in England. So one of the most popular Anti-Federalists was Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson and the other Anti-Federalists said, okay, We'll agree to it if you put this in the document. And it was the Bill of Rights. That's why they're called amendments, because they amended the Constitution. So the amendments put things in it that protected our God-given and nailed rights. The Bill of Rights belongs to you. It doesn't belong to the government. When they say you have constitutional rights, you don't have constitutional rights. You have rights the Constitution protects, because if it gave you rights, it would be called privileges. So, number one, that's wrong, what they've been doing. So, you know, it's, who, who's seen this before? I mean, it's, it's obvious. Uh, when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. So what was put in place? Martin Luther King, never forget that everything Hitler did was legal. It was. It was legal. So, understanding what law is is very complex. You almost have to totally erase your mind. So, this one here is out of, I think, the Lockport City Code. It says, the citizens of the state from time to time residing in said city shall continue to be a corporation by the name of the city of Lockport. So, it says the citizens are a corporation. I, I, I'm not a corporation, I don't know what you think, but why would they do this? This is from the city of Buffalo. The citizens of the state from a time to time reside within the boundaries of the city of Buffalo to find this section shall continue to be a municipal corporation. So they're calling citizens a corporation. This is from uh, U.S. Codes. It defines the word person. A person includes a natural person, including an individual, Indian, a corporation, a partnership, and a unit corporation. So which one are you? So this isn't very clear to me at all. It's like a person can be even, you know, either one of them. But when you look at codes and statutes, it basically says person this, person that, person that. So it's, it's saying that a person has to follow these regulations. But under what law? Is it laws of nature? I don't think so. So their term is to term United States. Do you live in the United States or do you live in the United States of America? Where do you live? So everything is about legalese, legal definition, and this is what makes it legal. Because if they can turn it into an entity that legally exists, the judges have to legally make that decision with it. Because it's statutory, codified rules and regulations. So the United States means a federal corporation. So when you are asked a question in your driver's license, are you a US citizen? You're agreeing to be a federal corporation under that. Now the United States is legally deemed, I think I got it in here. So the state means any of the several states, the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, the Commonwealth of Nor Northern Marianas, or the any territory in possess or possession of the United States, or possession, okay? You know, they don't possess New York State. United States mean a federal means a federal corporation, AC Department, Common Board, other security entity. But you notice it doesn't say anything about the other states. You wonder why all the dysfunction happened in Puerto Rico during the the damage that happened out there, that's why. 
Because realistically, they don't act. They're under the corporation of the United States. There it is again, the District of, District of Columbia. And they throw in their uh, trust commonwealth here in the United States, trust territory of Pacific Islands, and, and they say any other state, but they don't name the states, which is questionable. Now, I looked up the definition, uh, definition of the United States of America. Now, you think that the definitions would both be the same, the United States and the United States of America. What it says here, the definition of the United States is beginning at a stone bound set in ground at the southeastern side line of a state highway number three leading to Bar Harbor to Seal Harbor and stone bound marking the northeastly corner of a lot formerly belonging to the trustees. It's actually mentioning a location in the top corner of Maine. And then it goes on to talk about um, the other side. So the United States of America is from the east coast, west coast, and north and south. So why is the United States legally defined different than the United States of America? Because the United States is a federal corporation that they can manipulate and use that term to control and manipulate you in thinking that you're a citizen of that state. And believe it or not, I had it in here that the United States, the, the term United States, the area is only surrounding Washington, D.C., around the District of Columbia. So when you answer your question on your taxes, on your driver's license, are you a citizen of the U.S., you're saying yes, that you live there. When you don't, you're a citizen of New York State. But by doing that, they, you're contracting yourself and giving up your rights, not knowing it. That's how the game is played. It's all about contract law and waiting your rights because the Constitution has the Commerce Clause in it. And the Commerce Clause says that the government can regulate commerce. So if you're made into a corporation, they can now regulate you. Like, you're told that driving is a privilege. You're taught that certain things are privileged. Let's grab my water over here. So, but you look up the legal definition of water, thank you. You look up that legal definition of water, yeah, water, right here. <laughs> it's in my mouth now. <laughs> Tell it's on my mind. On my mind. <laughs> so, uh, the definition of um, driver is a person operating a motorized buggy for commerce or transporting goods for pay. That's the legal definition of that. All right. The legal definition definition of a motor vehicle is a motorized buggy used for commerce. Right. The definition of automobile is a motorized buggy used for personal transportation. Because the Supreme Court ruled you can't regulate somebody's travel. So, fancy me, I got a ticket, ticket going through Portview like everybody else here. Uh, <laughs> driving my 1970 GTO with my son going to Silver Lake, there's a big uh, restaurant out there, um, and there was a big car show, like 300 cars, so I'm going through, and there's a checkpoint in Corfu, 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 and um, I pull up to this one officer checkpoint, and I knew that the checkpoint was illegal, because I, I uh, kind of was the subject to that, <laughs> and testing it before in my life, so I knew what I was doing was illegal, but I, I decided to play nice, because I had my 10-year-old son next to me, so, my windows rolled up, it was kind of chilly. In 1970, they didn't have retractable seat belts. So you couldn't lean forward and roll down the window. So he's like this, the officer's like this, one. Then he's like, pull over, because he thought I was giving him a hard time, you know? So I pulled over and I said, look, I couldn't bend over to roll the window down. He goes, I'm giving you a ticket. For what? He goes, you got earbuds in your ear. So that's a violation of laws. It's a statute. You're saying you cannot hear, have earbuds. I said, well, did I commit a crime or anything like that? Did I hurt you? No. And I said, you can't argue with officers. It's okay, I'll take the ticket. So I wrote a letter to the court stating that I didn't understand the charge. Uh, and I sent a certified mail. Uh, we sh I showed up at court with a friend. And um, he's like, 
talk to the prosecuting attorney because they they want you to make a deal, plea, collect their money, and go in front of the judge. He, a lot of people know the process, how it works. So I said, you got my letter about the charges. And he goes, yeah, I got it. He goes, we get these all the time. Right? I said, seriously? Legal arguments against the ticket, like the constitutionality of the ticket. I said, you want me to talk to the judge? I can give you a go in there. So I'm sitting in there with the judge. Real nice guy. You can, really nice down there judge. So I get up in front of him, my friend's standing next to me, and he is, you gotta make a plea first. Well, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? I said, well, your honor, before I plea, I have a, a right to understand the nature and cause of charge against me. He says, uh, who's this guy next to me? Next to you? It's like, well, it's my friend. You make sure he sits down over there. So my friend was recording the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so he explains the charge of what I was doing. I said, well, first of your honor, I wasn't wearing earbuds, I was wearing Apple ear pods. Because <laughs> what do the ear pods do? They hang in your ear. They don't plug your ear. But he didn't know, he probably didn't know they were, you know, but he just wanted to plea on it. Because you get that plea, guilty or not guilty, it's a jurisdictional argument. Okay, there's a reason for that. They want you to plea. Because the minute you say not guilty or guilty, that gives them authority, because on the sheet they have, it says plea. They can't go any further without that plea. Because aren't we innocent until proven guilty? Do you know the legal term of not guilty is not legally defined the same as innocent? No. It's the legal game they play. I says, well, thank you, Your Honor. Is that a, a criminal or is it a civil charge? And he goes, neither. It's neither. I said, well, I motion to dismiss. I said, the Constitution only allows uh, civil or criminal charges. I motion, you know, he said it's a violation. I said, the Constitution doesn't say anything about violations. He goes, we'll call it a crime. Oh. I said, like, oh. I said, well, let the record of court show you, Your Honor, that I'm now being charged with a crime with no indictment by a grand jury. But, Your Honor, I have just one more question. Well, what is that? Well, to be charged with a crime, there's only two types of courts that can exist. One is a admiralty court under a military tribunal under the Constitution. The other, the other one is a common law court. I says, what court am I in? He's got, he's got a little red in the face. His, his, clerk, his clerk is whispering to him, just, just have to come back some other time. Just have to come back. <laughs> there's people in the room, right? And you're like, I don't want to say this. He goes, get the H out of my courtroom. Just like that. <laughs> just, just get that, you know. No. So it's like, wow, I thought I had one. Let's go. Take your buddy with you. That's good. You know, like, take your buddy with you. So uh, a month later, I get a thing in the paper stating that being I pled, I'm rescheduled to go back. I said, I never pled. So I wrote a nice little bit of the letter back, certified mail, saying, thank you, Your Honor, or whoever this was, because a plea can only be made by the defendant or the attorney. If it's made by the judge, it's practicing law from the bench. If the judge says not guilty, that means I'm not guilty and free to go. So then, uh, they didn't believe that. <laughs> Because now they sent me a driver's license suspension, right? <laughs> so I say, this went on for a year, right? But I'm practicing law. This is cheaper than going to law school, right? <laughs> this, is, this is quite, you know, it's like, okay. It's like a half an hour ride from my house. So, so um, I get to court, and um, they signed the thing, and I get my license, they rescheduled it. It went on for a year. So the, the after year, I went back in there. And they waited for everybody else to leave, and I was last. <laughs> but the judge was really good with people. I could tell he, he had a good heart, you know. So I, I went up and I said, Your Honor, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I said, I just want one thing from you. He goes, What's that? I said, I want you to learn what I know. I don't ask you to plead. I want to show you the information, and I want to take you out to lunch or dinner sometime and show you. It. So he whis whispers to his clerk. And he says, what's the cheapest we can charge you? <laughs> <laughs> so they charge me 20 bucks, 
pleaded down to whatever the, the fine, and that was it. And, and, and I'm sorry I never took them out to, I just never had time to, to take them out to lunch and, and show them you know, what, what goes on. But there's, there's a legal argument there, and they can't prove you wrong. And I file a multitude of court papers in court, and they just ignore you. They're supposed to follow procedures. They're supposed to give you a legal argument, what is legal and what is not. And they don't do that. That's the most disturbing aspect of what we're living under. So, a person, this is out of Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, 1891, okay? You cannot purchase a Black's Law Dictionary past 1977 because they're changing the meanings of the word in the dictionary so you don't know what it really means, legally. The nice thing about law dictionaries is they put the case law that defines the what the, the legal definition of the word. So it legally means that. So it's not like the Webster's. Webster's is very, very uh, vague. I'll read this to you. A person considered according to the rank he holds in society. Everybody, what rank are you in society right now? The declaration says that of independence says all men are created equal. What rank are you in right now? You're a king. You're a queen. You know, there's no rank. You're, 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 you, know, you are under God. With all the rights to which the place he holds entitles him and duties which he, it imposes. Okay, so there's a control there right away. You can see it. A human being being considered as capable of having rights and of being charged with duties, while a thing is the object over which rights may be exercised. See what these attorneys do? You see, see the games they play here? Persons are, I love this one, persons are divided by law into natural and artificial. <laughs> which one are you? So when you read that state law, and you read it says the person, you got to know which one you are. Are you an artificial one or are you a natural one? All right, and they won't tell you. Natural persons are such as God, the God of nature, formed us. I love that one. Artificial are such as are created and devised by human laws for the purpose of society and government, which are called corporations. All right. Now, a citizen is really interesting, too. A citizen in general, a member of a free society or general society, civitas, that turns from Roman uh, Greek time, possesses the honorable rights and privileges which can be enjoyed in any, any person under, under its constitution. Are you under the constitution or above it? You own it. It's yours. They make a contract to you. You are above them, and they want to make you under them. So understanding how this is flowing is you understanding what your rights are. Because they don't want you to know this. So what it goes on to say is it, it mentions the 14th Amendment. And the 14th Amendment says any persons born or naturalized in the United States of America are subject to the jurisdiction. Therefore, a citizen where they reside. I just got that one memorized. Um, so, persons, now we the people ordain the Constitution. Now, why are they using the word person and citizen? They're using it for a reason. Okay, so they should have said people, but they can't because we are the people. So, it's actually defined lower down. I kind of cut it off, but it defines the word citizen as being defined by the 14th Amendment because it says a citizen has privileges. So, that's the game they play. So that's why I said, are you a U.S. citizen or a U.S.A. citizen? What about a New York citizen? And there's a guy, uh, Paul Andrew Mitchell, that actually wrote a brief, uh, a, a very intelligent tax guy that started